In this video, we're going to take a look at characters from across the Texas Chainsaw Massacre franchise that I think could be fun killers in the new Texas Chainsaw Massacre game. So in my last video, I talked about settings from the franchise that I thought would make good map locations for the game. From that video, I had a few people ask me to do a video about which killers from the franchise would make good fits for the game. So in that previous video, I did talk about Gun Interactive CEO Wes Keltner's comments on Twitter that content from the sequels is not guaranteed and not a priority. And I discussed some of the issues and obstacles around that topic. I won't repeat all of it in this video, but if you missed it and want to learn more, I encourage you to check out that video. I'll put a link in the description and up here somewhere. So currently, the game features five killer characters. There are three killers pulled directly from the 1974 film, Leatherface, Cook, and Hitchhiker, as well as two new characters created specifically for the game, Johnny and Sissy. Each of these killers has unique traits, strengths, and weaknesses, as well as a special family ability they can utilize to help them in their pursuit of their victims. For instance, the cook has a seek ability that allows him to hear victims making noise and highlight them to the family, while Hitchhiker has the ability to set traps around the map that alert him when an unsuspecting victim steps on them. So with all that in mind, I'm going to highlight five characters from the franchise that I think would work well in the game, as well as talk about what their possible special abilities might be. So the first and most obvious choice is Chop Top from the Texas Chainsaw Massacre Part 2. Chop Top is the mentally unstable and sadistic twin brother of the original film's hitchhiker. He's an eccentric Vietnam War vet with a metal plate in his head, who is dangerous due to his unpredictable, erratic nature. Of all the family members introduced in the sequels, Chop Top has the most direct connection to the original film's family. Not only does he appear with both Leatherface and the cook in this sequel, but as mentioned, he's the twin brother of the hitchhiker, whose corpse he carries around throughout the film. Chop Top uses multiple weapons in the film, such as a hammer and a straight razor, but he's best known for carrying around his nasty wire coat hanger, which he uses to pick skin off of his own skull. He's one of the quickest and most agile members of the Sawyer family. He relentlessly chases Final Girl Stretch in the film's climax, proving himself to be difficult to shake off. He likes to tackle his prey. Because of all of this, I think if Chop Top were to be introduced to the game, his special ability could be related to chases in some way. Perhaps some sort of limited use ability that could help him close the gap in chases or outmaneuver his victims. So one note about this character, according to director Toby Hooper, Chop Top was overseas in Vietnam during the events of the first movie. So while the character exists in the era of the game, Gun Interactive would have to tweak the backstory a bit if they felt it necessary to explain why he was present in the game. Next up, Tinker Sawyer is a character from the 1990 film Leatherface The Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3. I like the idea of Tinker in this game context because He's known for his mechanical skills and inventiveness. He has a hook for his hand, which could be used as a primary weapon in a number of ways. So in the film, he's responsible for crafting and maintaining the family's various traps and weapons, which they use to capture and torture their victims. So I think it would make sense that, like Hitchhiker, his ability would relate to traps in some manner. Maybe Tinker could booby trap items or doors around the map. And if a victim grabs that item or uses that door, not only would their location be momentarily revealed, but they would temporarily be unable to use items in their inventory. The fun thing about Tinker is that there are a lot of ways they could go with this inventor ability. Another interesting aspect about this character is that while this film is from 1990, based on the actor's age, Tinker would have been in his early 20s in 1973 when the game is set, so if Gun Interactive did want to break from that time period, they could feature a younger version of this character and still have him fit into the setting. So my next suggestion is probably going to be kind of a controversial choice, and that's Verna Sawyer from the Leatherface prequel. So Verna was originally introduced in Texas Chainsaw 3D as a relatively sweet old lady, but the prequel Leatherface reveals her to be a vile, deranged woman who raises the Sawyer children to be murderous cannibal psychopaths. While we don't actually see her murder anyone directly in the film, she does get violent when she has to, so it's not really a stretch to imagine this woman has her fair share of murders under her belt. Now let me be clear, 
I'm not a fan of this movie or this Texas Chainsaw 3D slash Leatherface timeline in general. I know in the comments in my last video, some of you were not a fan of anything from these movies making its way into the game at all. Do your thing, cuz. And that's absolutely fair. Now, having said that, I do think a bad movie can have interesting elements, and with these suggestions, I'm more focused on what film elements could make interesting game content in their own right, regardless of the quality of the source they came from. So, while I don't like these films, I am interested in the dynamic this character could bring to the game. Because of Verna's manipulative and controlling nature as the matriarch of the Sawyer family, I think her special ability could be something related to leadership. Perhaps an ability that buffs her fellow family members in some way when activated, or maybe directs them towards victims in some new way. One thing that interests me about Verna is that she fits the timeline of the game. The majority of Leatherface takes place in 1965, so with the game taking place just eight years later, this is a character that realistically could be active in 1973. From the Texas Chainsaw Massacre The Next Generation, my next killer suggestion is Vilmer Slaughter, the maniacal tow truck driver portrayed by Matthew McConaughey before he became a major Hollywood star. Despite this film being one of the most hated in general, Vilmer has become a bit of a fan favorite due to his over-the-top personality. Vilmer is also known for his bizarre mechanical leg, which he controls with a remote control. This leg is powerful enough to crush his victim's skulls. Vilmer wields several other weapons throughout the film, including a knife and a hammer, and he's also a bit of a pyromaniac who enjoys setting his victims on fire. As a game character, Vilmer could be a bit slow due to his mechanical leg, but I think this leg could be incorporated into the gameplay as a way to destroy certain obstacles, similar to Leatherface's chainsaw. It could also be used as a way to execute downed enemies, as he does in the film. As for his special ability, this is a tough one. He's such a bonkers out there character with his Illuminati talk and crazed intimidation methods that I could almost see some sort of ability that temporarily affects his victim's sanity in some way after an attack. Admittedly, this may be too wild of an idea for this game, but at the same time, Sissy's poison clouds already test the limits of realism in my opinion. An interesting note about this character and the next generation content in general, of all the Texas Chainsaw sequels, this one may be the easiest one for Gun Interactive to license content from. I say this because the film was written and directed by Kim Henkel, who also wrote the original film. Kim Henkel also happens to be who Gun worked with to get the rights to the original film. Now, you may be thinking, okay, just because he made the movie doesn't mean he has the rights to it. That should be Sony, who distributed the film. So... A while back, I made a video featuring Texas Chainsaw Massacre The Next Generation that featured too much footage from the movie, apparently, because the video got copyright claimed. The reason I bring this up is because the name of the rights owner on the copyright claim wasn't Sony, it was Kim Henkel, meaning that Kim Henkel possibly has the rights to the intellectual property instead of Sony, and if Gunn already has a working relationship with him, this one potentially could be easier to license than the other sequels. Assuming I'm not just misunderstanding that whole situation, which is entirely possible. Now, having said that, the real challenge in licensing this character would be getting likeness rights to Matthew McConaughey. In 2018, Scream Factory had to change the cover art for their Blu-ray release of the film to remove both McConaughey and Renee Zellweger's likenesses. We did have to remove them, due to unforeseen issues with sub-licensing this title. My takeaway from this is that either the rights were too expensive, or Matthew McConaughey simply didn't want his likeness used at all. Which, if it was that difficult getting his likeness rights for a Blu-ray cover of a movie he stars in, chances are Gunn would have even a tougher time. So if they did include this character, they would likely have to tweak his appearance so it did not resemble Matthew McConaughey. The final character I'd like to talk about is Sheriff Hoyt from the 2003 remake. Hoyt is an abusive and unhinged sheriff who uses his position of authority to terrorize and manipulate unlucky travelers, leading them to their doom at the hands of Leatherface. We learn in the 2006 prequel to the remake, The Texas Chainsaw Massacre The Beginning, that Sheriff Hoyt assumed the role of the town sheriff by killing the real sheriff and taking his identity. So weapon-wise, Hoyt as a game character would likely use his police baton as his primary weapon to attack victims. He uses this baton to violently beat victims in the movie, and I think it would fit the game style well. Hoyt also uses several firearms in the movies, but I feel guns wouldn't fit in well with the gameplay. 
it would be too OP unless you nerf them in a way that would be really unrealistic. But I could see the guns being used for executions. Seeing that Hoyt is a sheriff, albeit a fake one, I think his ability would probably relate to surveillance and information in some way, similar to the Cook's seek ability or Johnny's hunt ability. Perhaps Hoyt could have police radios he could place around the map, similar to how Hitchhiker sets up traps, that would alert him when victims were nearby, sort of a proximity-based version of the Cook's ability. I could also see him getting a standard issue police flashlight, which could help him find victims hiding in the shadows. The dilemma in introducing this character to the game is that he's not at all part of the canon to the 1974 film. The remake exists in an alternate universe to the original film, so while he makes sense for the era, seeing as the remake takes place on the same date as the events of the original film, I know some purists might not be happy with a crossover like this. Honestly, I could make an entire video highlighting the pros and cons of adding non-canonical or anachronistic characters and locations to this game, so I'd like to hear your thoughts on the matter. Would the inclusion of content from the remake timeline hurt the game or add to the fun? Would mixing content from different eras, such as Vilmer, ruin the feel of the game, or would it simply provide variety to keep the game fresh? Also, was there a family member you thought should have been on this list? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. And thanks for watching! Check out some of this other stuff and be sure to subscribe for more! And until next time, later Danger Seekers!